Our guest is Ian Bernstein. He is the CTO and uh, founder of Sphero and uh, was originally robotics. And I remember seeing it and being thinking it was really cool because it was just a, it was kind of like this newer Sphero, the one that's blinking. It was just a ball by itself. Uh, didn't have the, the ports, the windows inside, so you didn't know exactly what was going on in there. Mm -hmm. um, and you control it with your smartphone and you could roll it around, play games. It was, it was very cool. We all played with it a lot. Um, how did you come up with the ball idea? I mean, because that's not what other robots looked like at the time. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, that was interesting. So we, you know, we wanted to make physical things you could control. We, right. we went through all the obvious ideas, right. right? Like controlling door locks and lights. And, um, and we had prototyped a lot of those things. We put a remote starter in my car and you could like start the car and roll How down fun. the windows and stuff from your phone. How fun. And you're um, doing this at this point, you don't have investment, right? Except for your dad. Yeah. So you're just kind of doing this experimentally, playing yeah. with it. Yeah. And looking for a product. You're in Techstars at this point, so you're getting feedback from Techstars or? Well, so when we were prototyping these things, we weren't in Techstars. You hadn't we, gotten we were in. applying. They we, said, we, you can't do it unless you get a co-founder right, and so you have a product idea and a business plan and all that, right? Yeah. So I met Adam. We started, you know, got some money. We started prototyping some stuff. We made all these videos and we started sending it to Techstars and we reapplied for the Boulder program for the summer of 2010 um, and ended up getting in. Uh, and it was nice. like the first day or two of the program. I mean, we had a list of like 100 different ideas of things that we could build. Right. And uh, it, was, yeah, it was like three in the morning and I was like, I just need something simple, like something I could like pull out of my pocket, throw it on the uh, table and it like does something it. cool. And I don't know like where the hell this idea came from, but Adam was like, what about a marble? And then I thought back to this. So there's a, somebody sort of in that beam robotics community had built this solar powered robot ball that I'd sort of duplicated when I was probably 14 years old. Um, so I thought back to that, and I was like, what about a robot ball? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, maybe that could be kind of cool. <laughs> you don't need wheels because you are one. <laughs> yeah. In any, in any direction. It, it worked out really well, right? I mean, it was, I mean, it, yes, it was like a kind of a novel, a novel shape right. for, for a robot. Um, but it also, you know, something that was core to our company, like we're both sort of makers, hackers. Um, we wanted people to be, you know, anything we made had to have an SDK, an API. Nice. We wanted people yeah. to be creative around the product. Yeah. Um, and we, when we thought about the ball, it was such a blank slate. Like some of our other, well, I mean, there's like door locks and stuff like that. But if we, you know, more on the toy side, if we made like a car, you're it's kind not, of, you're right. kind of stuck with the car. Right. And yeah. there's not that many things you could do with it. But the ball, it was like, this could be a car maybe. Yeah. It could be a racing game right. or like... Um, when we thought of like things that people might do with it, it was just like no end. It was right. just so easy to just come up with stuff. Like so. a sphere, it's infinite. It can, can goes on and on and on. Yeah, yeah it, it was good too. Like, I mean, the ball is one of the oldest, you know, maybe the oldest toy right. in the world, like thousands of years old. Kids are immediately gravitate towards balls. They just, it, even at one year old, they want to grab them. Yep, play yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so did you already have an idea of how you could move it? Is no. that well known? No. <laughs> no. I it's mean, not like everybody knows how to move a robot ball. That's simple. I mean, the traditional way, like the one that I built when I was a kid, sort of used a, a pendulum type mechanism mm -hmm. where you have a, a shaft um, in, the, in the middle of the shell, and then you have a motor on that moving a counterweight. Right. And then a second motor to move the weight back right. and forth. So it's to like turn. A, almost like a, in a swing, you're, you're, you're changing the, the center balance and. Exactly. By, by rotating. So you, just as you pump your legs in a swing, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, but you don't do that? I thought you did. No. So, well, the problem with that is you can't... So one of our sort of criteria is we wanted to be able to move in any direction almost uh, in instantaneously. Right. Um, so we had to design something else. And, I mean, we talked to a bunch of people. We had, like, all kinds of crazy ideas. Like, what if you had, like, water inside the sphere and there was, like, a little like a robot boat, <laughs> like what would happen if like the little robot boat like drove over to one side, would it roll? Like, so essentially you have to change the center of gravity, right? So it'll it'll roll to balance itself. Right. So you're thinking of different ways you can shift the weight of the yeah, sphere. In, in, in I like direction. the robot boat. 
we, didn't uh, do that. That didn't work. No, I don't think that would work. We had we actually prototyped one where we took a, a ball out yeah. of a, a, an old mouse. Uh huh. And then we had like two sort of like you would have the two little roller wheels in the mouse, but we motorized those so we could move that ball in any direction. Uh -huh. um, and then put that in the sphere. It sort of worked, but it would be hard to make it small. Right. Um, and then ended up with the design that we have now. Are you 3D printing these at the time? Is that how you're prototyping them? You're actually making them? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we didn't sort of in that time frame. So this was like summer 2010. You really couldn't get good 3D printers back Replicator then. Replicator like, wasn't out yet. And... Yeah. They were pretty, pretty crude and Right. Like anything or they were really expensive. expensive, yeah. So we did have parts 3D printed, but not not by us, and it was it. expensive. Yeah. Um, so you had to wait till you had something you thought was going to work. Yep. Was there a eureka moment when you or Adam said, oh, what about this? Or? Yeah, I think so. We had a, yeah, there's always like that first like prototype that comes together, you know, for all our products when it's like, right. yeah, that is a eureka moment, right? Um, but yeah, it was sort of more of a, the design we ended up with was sort of like a segue inside of a sphere. Okay. Um, so it's actually a little robot with two rubber wheels. Yeah. And as you know, the little robot drives up on the inside. So there's of the a shell. robot in the robot. <laughs> yeah. And he's a little like a segue like robot, and he'll drive around inside the the sphere. Yep. You can kind of see it in the new Sphero. I'm glad you put windows in the new Sphero. Yep. The Sphero 2, because you can kind of see what's going on. And I like it that you're not hiding it. You're not saying, oh, it's magic. Uh, we won't tell you how it works. We, we wanted to in the beginning, um, you know, and then we changed with the Sphero 2.0. Had anybody done anything like that? I mean, or was this out of, you just invented this out of whole cloth? Um, I mean, there was, you know, some other robot balls, like I was saying when I was, you know, that right. were sort but of nobody inspiration. Nobody did it this but, way. Mm, not, not not really like i don't know maybe some hack i don't know maybe right. some random person was the segway sure. was the segway uh, an inspiration for this um not really it just kind of you know we needed a way to like describe what we had built right or, like you know right. thought of a bunch of so stuff you said we could put sense. a two wheel <laughs> <laughs> i'm still trying to understand it because it can because it's on two wheels it can rotate that way it can go right. forward backwards it can't quite go diagonally but it can rotate and go diagonally pretty quickly yep so it gives you the motility inside to go in any, what you want to go in any direction, backward or forward. Right. Um, that is pretty, that's a pretty clever idea. 